So recently at Games announced their Mega Drive Mini, and it's been getting an awful time by the gaming press. And rightly so, because at Games just produce complete and utter crap. They just box up this stuff pretty nice. Well, the people in China have brought us this. It's not a Mini, this is a full size Mega Drive, which actually outputs HDMI. Oh yes, and according to the sticker here, if you can see it, it comes with 2.4 gigahertz wireless controllers. Now that is the same as the new At Games machine. I wonder if this is the same machine? Well, we'll soon find out. Now around on the back of the box, it has some very, very, very good information. Just check out some of these points that are amazing. I especially love this part here. If you do not clean your games, the system will not work, even if they work in another system. Still clean them. <laughs> That's classic. And this is this is all good advice actually. Do not blow into your game cartridge or system. The moisture in your breath will corrode and contaminate the pin connections. So true. Like this one too, your HDTV will cause a delay when playing retro style games. Very true. Basically say, this is not the machine's fault, it's your TV's fault, get yourself a better TV. Mm. <laughs> it's true though, it is true. Okay, I especially love this point. For best picture quality when using a HDTV, please change the TV's video format aspect ratio to 4.3. Standard normal when playing. Right, all those people that play retro games in widescreen, why'd you do it? It just makes the games look ugly. I don't know, but I really love the advice on the back of this box, it's class. Okay, so what do we get in the box? Well, according to this, we get the control deck, that's the Mega Drive, two controllers, HDMI cable, AC adapter, and AV cable. Okay, and as you see over here, it gives you a brief rundown on how to set the system up. Not too complicated. Okay, let's open this beast up. And I've got to say, yes, as usual, it's from China and <laughs> The box is bashed. Can they not send something just once without bashing the box? Uh, anyway, let's open up this uh, very interesting looking system. Okay, now this has not been opened yet. This is going to be the first time ever. What's inside? Okay, well, <laughs> the packing is very how you're doing there. That's very uh, cheap and nasty. Okay, we'll get rid of that. Oh, we've got a game cartridge. Well, App Games may give you a lot of the games built in, but the Chinese copiers give you an 18 in one game cartridge, which feels very, very light and flimsy. Okay, we'll check that out. Got Thunder Force 3 on there. Okay, so we have the AV cable. Composite video, we won't be using that. We have two wireless controllers. Let's open one of those up. Okay. These are different than the App Games ones, and there's a little LED on there. I don't think that's infrared, I bloody hope it's not infrared. Start and select. Why have you got a select button on a Mega Drive controller? That's weird. Um, yeah, they feel pretty crappy to be honest. Yeah, not very good. But what do you expect? Okay, we have the power brick. Thankfully they've given me one that actually works in Japan for the change. HDMI cable, a little manual here. Got English on this side, you can pause that if you want to read it. And the other side is Chinese. Oh yeah, talking of which, I can't tell the difference between Chinese and Japanese, just not Portuguese and Spanish. Sorry about that. People who saw my last video will know what I'm talking about. Okay, and here's the actual console itself. Okay, let's get all this off the table. Now, let's take a look. Well, it looks like a Mega Drive. It doesn't look anything different. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Uh, Mega Drive logo is missing, even though it was pictured on the box. Volume slider, yeah, reset button. Power on and off, and the cartridge port. Okay, and let's take a look at this next to a real Mega Drive. Here we go, here's a real Mega Drive. Oops, that thing's on the floor. And as you can see, yeah, they look pretty similar. Yeah, not bad at all. 
Okay, so you can also notice at the front, it does have the headphone jack, like a real Mega Drive, and two standard control ports. So you can use standard controllers on this, and we will be checking that out. Okay, let's check out the bottom compared to a real Mega Drive as well. As you can see, they look pretty much the same. It, it, <coughs> excuse me. It even has the sections to plug in a Mega CD. And it's got the, the expansion port cover. I wonder what's inside there. Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just a piece of plastic. Okay, well, what is actually in this? Um, let's take a look. Okay, so let's take a look inside and what do we have in there? Um, not a lot really. But a very small board. We've got a flat ribbon cable going to the video out port on the back. And we've got another ribbon cable going to the front where the um, headphone jack and stuff are. Let's take a look in the top. Yeah, <laughs> not a lot in there. There's the actual Mega Drive, yep, that chip right there. And as you can see, it's had its uh, identification completely sanded off. Let's see what's over here. Not a lot. Yeah, so basically this is a Mega Drive on a chip solution. But that's good because at least it's not emulated, so hopefully it will perform pretty well. So we've seen inside it, but let's take a look around the back. What do we have? Well, you can see we've got our composite video here and we've got our HDMI here and power input here. And there's also this little switch. Now this little switch says J and O and what that means is Japan and overseas. So basically any game with region protection, flick that switch and it should run. So taking a look at the controllers, you can see that this one is labeled P1 and this one is labeled P2. So I presume that means you have to use this as a one player controller. And I think that might be true because I did try and use this one first and nothing worked. So anyway, like the App Games console, you have a screw holding in the battery compartment, but the good thing is, is this screw does not come out, so you're not gonna lose it. It just sort of sticks on there. And yes, it does take AAA batteries. So we'll put two of those in there. Now I will leave that off. We can't bother putting that on. And if you notice, when I press a button, the little LED on the top lights up. Now, I'm looking at this on the screen right now, and I can tell you there's absolutely no lag. No lag at all. I mean, no, seriously, there's no lag. Let me move the camera around and point at the TV, okay? Okay, so here you can see the game is actually running. Press start. Oh, start, not select. And yeah, there seems to be no lag. Now the App Games machine was a uh, complaint to have lag. So let's see. Yeah, that moves exactly as I uh, press it. Seems to be okay. Let's see what it's like playing the game. Okay. Yeah, we'll go anywhere. Uh, which one's jump? There's jump. Okay, well... Uh... No, seriously. That seems to be working really well, and you'll notice that some of the videos of that At Games piece of crap that's uh, being announced have a um, pretty jerky scrolling because it has frame issues. Uh, you know, it skips frames to keep the speed up. And as you can see, this is running lovely and smooth with no frame skipping. So now that we've seen around the console and inside it, it's time to check out its performance. So what we'll do is we'll try it without any games first, see if it's got anything built in. Then we'll give this try, the Super 18 and one that came with it. And then we'll also see if the Sega EverDrive will work with it. Or Sega Mega EverDrive, I should say. As well as that, we've also got to check to see how good the audio is and what game shall we use? Well, we're going to use Thunder Force 4. Nothing pushes a Mega Drive sound chip like this game. And of course, we've also got to see, is it going to be compatible with virtual racing. Probably not, but we've got to give it a try. Okay, so let's give this machine a boot up and let's connect it straight to the capture device via HDMI. Sega!
So first of all, let's take a look at Sonic the Hedgehog, since everybody knows what Sonic the Hedgehog should look like and sound like. So straight away you can see that the machine is running at the correct speed. Well, the correct speed for most of the world, that's a NTSC 60Hz. And the sound seems to be... Perfect! Now you're probably thinking this is running through HDMI, well, this is actually the composite video and the reason is, it's because the HDMI had a bit of a dodgy timing and ended up looking like this. Looks okay, but the sound kept stuttering. Yeah, these Chinese clones are not very good at doing the HDMI. Okay, well let's put in a real game, this is Thunder Force 4. I must make it clear though that the HDMI did work perfectly fine on the TV, just didn't like my capture card. So as you can hear, Thunder Force 4 also sounds very good. But, have you noticed the sound is in mono? Yes, I didn't notice this when actually filming uh, the end section for this uh, video. So um, if I did, I wouldn't have praised the machine as much as, as I'm going to in the end of this video. But um, yeah, what this machine does is it mixes the left and right channels into one mono channel. So you're not missing any channels, but they're not separated either. So it doesn't sound anywhere near as good. But as you can see, um, from the Force 4 seems to be running at a very nice frame rate there. It doesn't seem to be skipping any frames at all, and it sounds perfectly fine. Apart from it's in mono. Okay, let's give Virtual Racing a try. Will this work? Um, no. No surprise there. Just a black screen. Okay, well let's take out Virtual Racing, and let's stick in the EverDrive. Will the EverDrive work on this machine? Won't work on the Ad Games machine, that's for sure. Yep, it works on this machine. Bonus point. And since we've got the other drive in, let's try a couple of Mass System games. Can we play Mass System games on this Mega Drive via the EverDrive? Yes, we can. Here's Alex Kidd and the Lost Stars, and it seems to be running. Okay, it seems to be a little bit of a gla graphic glitch there above Alex's head. Right, I've never played this game. Um, I'm not sure how you kill anything either. Can't jump on them. And I don't seem to have any weapon. <laughs> well, who cares? The game's running. Okay, let's take a look at another Mass System game. This is Rygar. Now, this seems to be running without any graphical glitches. Yep, very nice. Games seem to not support the FM sound, which is no surprise because uh, they don't on a regular Mega Drive either. And here we go with Gulliver sound. Yes, this seems to be working just fine as well. Now we can't check out some Mass System games without taking a look at Fantasy Zone, so let's take a look at that. Okay, so let's go back to some Mega Drive games and let's try a game which may cause this uh, system to have some graphical defects. Now the reason why this game may freak out the machine is the way it does line scrolling. Let's see if they can handle the two roads, one above the other. And it really is a shame that this machine has mono sound because this game has really good stereo separation. Okay, wait for it, here comes the road. Here it comes. Ah, uh, yes, it's handling that just fine. The little graphical defect you can see in the corner of the screen actually play actually appears on a real Mega Drive. And here's Gunstar Heroes running perfectly fine. Next 
too, also no problem. Now the beauty with having a Mega Drive working on this machine is that we can actually check out the real audio capabilities of it. Do games sound as they should? Well, of course in mono. Well, this Mega Turret track seems to be sounding okay. So what I'll do is I'll just sit back and let you listen to some of these Mega Drive tunes and see if you can tell if they have any weird uh, sound channels out of place or sound channels which are louder than they should be. But don't mention that it's a not in stereo because I think we've figured that one out. What a bummer. have it, that's the Fei Hao HD Retro Game System, better known as the Mega Drive with HDMI out. So what do I think of it? Well to be honest it is actually really good. It doesn't have any of the problems which that Act Game System that was recently announced has. I mean it doesn't have frame skipping, the wireless controllers work really well, no lag on the controllers and the video quality out is very good. Although it is not perfect cartridge port does grab the cartridges a little bit too tightly and I also have to say that the output color is a little bit too bright for my liking but I guess you can always adjust the color on your TV for that. Plus sides include running an EverDrive, works that perfectly fine. The Ad Games machine will not run the EverDrive, this will. So that is a massive bonus. Of course it won't run, it won't run virtual racing but neither will the Ad Games machine. Also in favour of this machine, you can now run your Master System games on it via the EverDrive. Can't do that on the App Game System. But yeah, I mean, overall, it's very good. The only other thing I would uh, have a slight complaint about is the audio. It is not perfect. It is slightly different than a real Mega Drive. But, I mean, if you've never played the games before, you would probably never notice. And the difference isn't really that bad. I mean, as far as clones go, it sounds really, really, really good. 
Most Mega Drive clones sound awful, but this one sounds very, very good. Pretty close to the original machine. So, would I recommend buying the uh, Fei Hao HD Retro Game Console? Yes, I would. This costs about 7,000 yen at the moment of uh, this video going out. A brand new Mega Drive, or a, you know, I used the Mega Drive in, new, in brand new condition, cost you around about 12,000 yen. So, almost twice the price of this. And this lets you use it on a HD TV. So, yeah. Very, very good. No complaints at all. And I must say, I did check um, an official 6 button and an official uh, 3 button Sega Mega Drive pad in the ports here, and they worked perfectly. No issues at all. So, yeah, a big thumbs up to a clone from China. I never would have thought I'd be saying that, but I am. Definitely worth picking up. Good machine.